the community would like me to Doesn't do. Doesn't cough right now. <laughs> I'll buy one. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, tonight's uh, meeting, all members are present. I'm looking uh, for a motion uh, approval of the agenda for tonight's meeting. So moved. By Dan, second? Second. By Chad. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes 7-0. Um, and next up is diffusion and taxation. Julie. <coughs> Good evening, board members. Dr. Stallo. Tonight is our required chief and taxation hearing concerning the 2016-17 levy certification. This is the night that we actually talk about two years at the same time. Tonight we'll be talking about our current year budget and doing final finalizing that. And this levy is for next fiscal year. So keep that in mind as we go through our um, agenda. We have to talk about the tax levy calendar we talk a little bit of it about our basic school funding and then factors contributing to our levy change. And again, it's 15 K 16 and we do have some graphic bill analysis as we go through, um, for our school district tax levies, it's either set by state formula or voter approved. There are some formulas that the local, um, like the school board can act on, but they are also set by formula. And so you are limited in what you can levy as well. And so our authorized total revenue minus our property tax taxes is our state rate. Um, as we go through, I'll show you some analysis of, of our adjusted net, net tax capacity and also our referendum market value. Both of those have seen an increase in that capacity, which I am not surprised and I'm sure the board is not either as our community is growing and also the values and the return in the economy have contributed to that increase in those um, capacities. And the third um, tr factor is our increase in people units. Here's a historical and our projected growth. Um, tonight the board will be voting on and approving our final levy for the current year based on 7,824 students. And so you can see that's quite an increase from last year's 7,542. Because of that big number and that increase in those student net student growth, those formulas that drive our levy are determined a lot of times based on pupil unit. And so that's why you'll see some increases in our levy this year, mainly because we have a growing student population. This is our referendum market value analysis and you can see 2014 that we are climbing back up from a low um, just lately in the last seven or eight years at 2012. We are back up and we are um, at the 2009 levels and I'm guessing by um, 2015 we'll be back up in the 2008 level as well. And same with our adjusted net, net tax, tax capacity. We are back up in those levels back at 2009 and we will continue to grow and, and those numbers will increase as well. So factors impacting our tax change, um, talked a little bit about this already, our state level decisions, um, those are state formulas such as set, set by the legislature. Um, some changes in sales ratio, which would adjust our adjusted net tax capacity. And any laws mandating code compliance. As you know, this is the first year of the long-term facility maintenance levy and that replaces our health and safety levy and a deferred maintenance levy. So it's kind of a, um, they flipped new names. It's a new legislative um, compli um, code compliance for that. And then issues determined by district voters. We have our bond referendums and our excess levy referendum for those. 
and then the local factors, um, real estate market abatement, property improvements, um, changes in assessed values, any changes in classifications. So what's included is our voter approved referendums, um, those levies set, set by state for only that you really don't have any, um, you know, if you were to under levy those, you would also, we would also receive less state aid. So you really don't have a whole lot of choices unless you choose to under levy, which we would also lose money in that aid. So that's a piece of that that's different from uh, cities and counties in that we can't, um, we don't have a lot of those local discretions that we can utilize. We do have a few, like I said, reemployment, our safe schools levy, and most of the time these are set by formula, given by formula by pupil units. And so you have a cap on what you can levy. Um, Long-term facility maintenance, our facility leases, integration, and we also are able to levy for key comp and OPEB. And they're also formula driven. So OPEB, <coughs> which we normally um, levy for and to help reach our um, required, we have about $11 million in OPEB um, that we need to fulfill. We're at about 6.1 million, so we're a little over half for that. Um, we can only levy for the actual uh, previous year retiree insurance costs. This last year it was 375,500, um, but we are not requesting any levy this year simply due to do, we know that our levy is up due to our student population. So if you look at this um, graphic analysis, you can see that the voter approved percentage of our levy is 65%, state determined is 13%, and that local discretion is 22. This is kind of a by each area, how our levy is laid out, all the different categories that are levied for. If you ever have seen our levy certification, it's about 37 pages long. And so I've tried to break it down and make it a little less cumbersome. However, this is still a lot of information to go through. But the local optional, um, as you can see, hasn't changed from the, nothing has changed from the preliminary levy. First, I'll go through that. But we have seen an increase again in that local optional, and that's formula driven by pupil units. Um, our equity is down a little bit. Um, transitional is about the same as in the past. Um, as you go through, you can see our operating capital is increased simply due to the student population again. Deferred maintenance is gone because it's being replaced by that long-term facility maintenance levy, which is the next line down. Our levy referendum, which is our excess that we asked for, that's up because it's pupil driven. Um, student achievement levy, same thing there. Key comp, um, same thing there. <coughs> Our reemployment levy is up um, because we've had um, some reemployment <coughs> costs, and so that is a cost driven levy. Safe schools levy is up because it's pupil driven. Um, career and technical is down a little bit. Um, health and safety is down. Um, our lease facilities. Are approximately what it has been in the past, a little higher simply due to our turf has got, has, uh, is now being fully leased. This last year we just had one payment. Um, achievement and integration is up because that's pupil driven. And our other OPEB, the board in September decided not to levy for OPEB at all, so that is down. And then our facility and equipment bonds adjustments, which is typical for our district and any prior year adjustments. And community service fund, we also levy for that. And that's driven by zero to five year old population in our district. You can see overall that's up um, slightly about $32,000. And our debt service fund, um, that is an increase also. And that's simply due to the schedules, the debt service schedules. So overall our property tax levy is up 4.7%. This is just a summary of each category, the general fund, community service fund, and the debt service fund, all on one page. If we were to look at Prior Lake, the average home value is 282,000. As you can see, um, I've not received any phone calls, just so that you as a board know from any community member concerning their school levy. 
um, their school taxes this year. And so that you can see because it's just, it's, it's not a huge effect to our taxpayers. I've had a few people tell me personally that their taxes are going up a few dollars, but it's mainly flat, even though that our increase is 4.7%. And that is because our property values are higher than they have been in the past. Same with the Savage, home values are almost 250,000. And again, the same thing. If you look at the district's seven year levy history, you can see that we have been mainly flat or decreasing. The last two years have been a little bit higher. And again, most of that is due to gains in pupil population. Any questions? I have included our proposed 1516 final budget because we need to talk a little bit about our budget at a levy truth and taxation hearing. However, it's interesting, this doesn't, our current year budget doesn't affect the levy certification for 1516. The levy is for 1617, this final budget's for current year. So I am showing it here, but it's not quite the same as the cities and counties that their budget depends on that levy. Any questions? I have one, Julie. So you can you see our historical mm -hmm. um, levy history um, being relatively flat except for the last few years. So if, if we continue to have the, the, the growth that we're experiencing right now, is this the kind of number that we're going to maybe be around for a while as long as we're growing, or is it, will it tend to <coughs> decline a little I bit? We'll see some increases um, in our levy certification <coughs> because of student growth. And that is just something that, you, but you will also see our property values increasing. So look, it should offset each other. Simply, it's kind of like it is this year. You're not seeing a whole lot of increases in your personal taxes because it's being spread across a wider, a greater number of properties. I would just make a comment. Um, I know this year we were diligent in taking the OPEG, um, which yes. that's the first year that since I've been on the board that we've done that. And I know um, we have an outstanding you know, liability on that that we've been gradually trying to build towards. So it, I don't think it's anything that we'd want to make a pattern of. Um, so if, if, if we continue to have some sort of increase, I would, you know, for me next year, it will be tough for me to not, not have those numbers because it, we do obviously have to fund that on a regular basis. We do have in our levy certification this year that long-term facility maintenance. We have a one-year carryover of health and safety funding. So we'll kind of have a little bit of a double levy, not a full, it's just okay. the health and safety portion. So once we, that drops off, that will actually create the room in our budget if you, or in our levy certification to allow us to have um, levy for the OPEB okay. without increasing it more than what Right, so th that'll soften it a little bit. Right. Okay. That was the reason in the preliminary budget that we knew we had that $290,000 of health and safety that we had just a one year carryover of that. Okay. Any other questions, comments? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Mark, I just. I have to address the public if there's anyone that want to make public comments. Um, so this is the portion of the meeting as to which anyone in the public can make comments um, on truth and taxation um, on the report that's given. Um, is there anyone wanting to address the board this evening on that? All right, seeing none. We'll move on to the consent agenda. <coughs> uh, the consent agenda items are considered routine in nature and will be enacted uh, by one motion. Um, the consent agenda this evening is the check wire transfer disbursement summary, the bank reconciliation statement from October 2015, uh, the school board minutes from November 2nd, the regular board meeting, the November 16th board data retreat, uh, world's best workforce study session, and December 7th um, board work session, and um, resignations, terminations, non-renewals as listed. Do I have a motion um, to approve the 
consent agenda. So moved. By Dan. Second? Second. By Todd. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes 7 0. And then do the organizational chart. Is that part of it, Martha? Was that part of the consent? That was part of the consent. Okay, I missed that. Can I do we do another motion? Okay. Everybody saw it, right? Mm -hmm. Did everybody answer it? All right. Um, resolution for acceptance of gifts. Um, give me one second. On this, um, I need a good list of the gifts um, are listed. Um, this does, they don't need to be read, uh, read aloud. So I'm looking for a motion to approve the gifts as listed. So moved. By Chad, second. I will second Chad's motion. By motion. Rich, this is a roll call vote. Chad? Aye. Ben? Aye. Dan? Aye. Todd? Aye. Aye. Rich? Aye. Melissa? Aye. Aye. All right, that passes 7-0. And we are at the portion of liquor pride and liquor showcase. And I think we're actually, if we can continue on, we've got several students here and they're gonna be ready at 7.30, just so you know. Oh wait, okay, Martha's gonna take that. Okay, so we'll go to the open forum. All right, uh, open forum is a 15 minute time period set aside for to receive citizen input. Um, is there anyone wanting to address the board this evening? Seeing none, uh, on to personnel items. Matt. Good evening, members of the board and Dr. Stahler. Um, <clears throat> first this evening, I would like to recommend the following uh, candidates for employment and I'm seeking board approval. All right, do I have a motion to accept the candidates for uh, employment? By Ben, second? Second. By Dan, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes 7-0. And next, I present the following leaves of absence and I'm seeking board approval. All right, do I have a motion to accept the leaves of absence at this time? By Todd, second? I'll second Todd's motion. By Rich, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes 7-0. And I have two staffing requests this evening. First off is a licensed staffing request for an additional uh, level three teacher at Grainwood in their special education program. Um, that program has seen a slightly larger than 40% increase in, uh, in students this year. Uh, do I have a motion to accept uh, the additional staffing as listed? By Ben, second? Second. By Chad, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes 7-0. And next I have a three-part um, <coughs> support staff request First of all, is for a uh, change to be made in the current position at the District Services Center um, in the uh, Finance Department. We're looking to move to a district accountant model from an accounting specialist. And we're looking for um, a background in accounting with this position and also to add more of a supervisory function to the position um, because it is replacing a currently vacant position um, the additional cost is not overly significant at about $13,000 a year. Um, secondly, there's a request here for a student support paraprofessional at Edgewood. Um, that's a half-time position in the early childhood special education program at Edgewood, which has seen uh, increased student participation um, with special education needs. And then lastly, we have a child nutrition assistant, just a request for an additional one hour a day um, they need uh, uh, just a little bit of extra labor hour there so that they can finish up their shift on time. Um, I just have a question. On my board packet, which I think it's current, I have 11,000 for the district service, um, for the district account. You said I'm 13? sorry, that's correct. It is, okay. It's 11,000. All right, yes. great. Anyone have any questions? Okay, seeing none, um, do I have a motion to approve the additional staffing? Um, of the district accountant, the student support paraprofessional, and the child nutrition assistant. So moved. By Chad, second. By Ben. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes 7 0. All right, seeing then I think we're ready. Okay, so go ahead. Thank you. We have um, to start out our Laker Pride this evening. 
We are absolutely delighted to have the members of the anthem team that are going to be singing our national anthem. Um, do we have anything right up here? Sure. Gotta come up here to get Would on you camera. mind coming right up here so that you're on camera so that we can <laughs> showcase you? See the little, that's the camera straight ahead. That's so. the thing hanging from the ceiling? We, we get to watch you from behind, but that's okay. The Anthem team, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves in just a moment, um, but part of what we're doing tonight with Lake with Pride is we're honoring, recognizing, and celebrating those students who participated in uh, state tournaments this fall. I was unable to see this, but I saw many pictures of this team or members of this team who were on a high dive, right, singing the National Anthem at the State uh, Girls dive, Swim and Dive Meet, which is absolutely fantastic. And I know there's other things that you, many other things that you've sang for as well, some sectionals and some other things. Twins game, thank you very much. Yeah, it was. Lakefront Music Festival. Yeah, it's beautiful and absolutely fantastic. So really fun to start an evening with your voices um, honoring our country and representing our community so well. Um, so I want to thank you for that, and I'm going to let you go ahead and just introduce yourselves if you would, please. Um, I am Elle Remby. I'm Emily Murphy. Brandon Wiedemann. Sarah Tebow. <laughs> Megan Hansel. Jenny Carlson. Anna Conrad. And uh, I don't know if Mr. Hahn is here, but Mr. Robert Hahn is, thank you very much, uh, the director. And, and, and Ms. Erlingson also, thank you very much um, for all the extra time that you all take uh, to, like I said, honor our country and represent our entire community and certainly our school district so well. So thank you. Thank you for being here tonight. And as the anthem team comes off, I would like to invite uh, Maureen O'Hare to come up, please. As part of our Laker Pride tonight, again, we want to recognize, celebrate, thank, and congratulate Maureen for many years of service to our school district. Um, I've got a few notes here that I want to be sure that I don't forget anything, if that's all right. Uh, Maureen taught D.A.R.E. to our first, third, and fifth graders for nine years. She even traveled to Wolf Ridge uh, several years with our fifth graders. After leaving the D.A.R.E. program, Maureen was assigned to the middle school um, to serve as our school resource officer. She held that position for the last eight years um, and also worked very closely with our Bridges ALC students. Um, not only has Maureen served in those capacities, but she's also helped our preschoolers during Community Helper Week each year. Uh, she's been a member of Community Fest and represented our community well in that. 
talk, she has talked to parents about child passenger safety for baby and me classes at Edgewood. In addition, she's held internet safety presentations for students and parents outside of the school day and has also been an integral part of our um, school crisis response team. Actually, I think that's when I met you um, last year when we were doing a tabletop exercise. We've been very fortunate to have Maureen be a part of our community and a part of our school district for so many years. We want to thank you for all you've done. We want to celebrate you in your retirement and know that you have had a lasting impact on our students, our staff, and our community. So thank you so much. As I said earlier, um, we have several athletes that we'd like to recognize tonight. Um, as you all know, our mission uh, calls for all learners to reach their full potential as contributing and pro productive members of our ever-changing global society. And we have many things that happen each day in our world of academics that we celebrate and we're proud of. We had an absolutely outstanding fall where our student athletes uh, represented us in so many ways at the state meet, um, or state meets. And I'd like to start with the boys cross country team. If I could invite them up, please. Right up to the middle, guys. Our state cross country team won the sectionals, placed eighth in the state tournament, again representing as a team our community. And a couple uh, standouts, um, Trenton Galloway earned all state honors. Great and answer. Thank you very much. <laughs> and Colin, uh, he's the new school record holder for the boys cross country in the 5K. Colin, thank you. Colin Byer, thank you very much. I'm so really proud. You guys did a fantastic job. Um, would also love you just to go ahead and introduce yourselves and Anything else that you'd like to share, feel free. <laughs> I'm Trent. Uh, we were section champs last year, too, so it's two years in a row. And it was kind of nice to watch the program grow because uh, my freshman year was the first time we had we got anywhere in the state in 20 years, and now we've gotten four years in a row. So that's pretty exciting. I'm Devin Binnard. <laughs> I'm Owen Kilinowski. I'm Nick Tarchoke. I'm Colin Dwyer. I'm Ryan Murr. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And I think our coaches, we've got some of our coaches here as well. Coach Marish is here. Excellent. And Coach McCarthy. And Coach McCarthy. Excellent. Thank you. Obviously, building a program, as we heard about, uh, takes a whole lot of work from our adults as well as our student athletes. So thank you very much. And congratulations again, gentlemen. <laughs> and now do we have the girls cross country runners. Excellent. Thank you very much. I'm just looking around. We've got a lot of great athletes here this evening. How are you? I got a chance to meet you. Mallory, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mallory is uh, actually we had two girls that uh, made it to the state tournament. Um, Mallory is with me right now, and Gabby Brinkley also. And she was unable to be here tonight, so I'm so glad that you were here. Um, Mallory placed first and section uh, and second place in the, or Mallory placed first in the sectional meet, and, Ga and Mallory, or Gabby placed second in the section race, and they both ran very well at state. And I know you are going to be back. Uh, hi, I'm Mallory. I'm only an eighth grader this year, so it's really exciting oh. to be able to be back at state for my second year this year. Fantastic. We look forward to watching you for many years to come. Congratulations. <laughs> okay, excellent. Our next group are our adaptive soccer team. If you would please come up. Excellent. <laughs> you 
please introduce yourselves first. Well, I'm Julian. I'm Tyler. Excellent. And uh, you also advanced to state by winning the playoff games. And again, I know you had a fantastic state tournament with fantastic fan support. Is that accurate? Is there anything else the two of you would like to share? Well, I didn't have anything. Nothing else? <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a lot of fun, too. Good. All right. Awesome. The girls swim and dive team. Thank you very much. Uh, the girls swim and dive team, we've got three of the swimmers and one diver. Excellent. Um, finished second in the conference. Jamie, who is standing right over here. Kimball placed 10th at the state in the diving. The team finished 15th in the state based on individual in relay finishes at the state meet. Um, again, a fantastic year. Uh, head coach Katie Haycraft is right over here, along with the assistant coaches Mary Pierce and uh, Justin um, Haycraft was selected as the Section 2A Assistant Coach of the Year for the Girls Swim and Dive Meet as well. And ladies, if you would like to introduce yourselves and let us know anything else that you would like about your season or anything. Um, my name is Lauren Harris. I'm a senior, and this is my sixth year on the team. And yeah, it's been really fun. It's my last year, but I'll be swimming next year, and I can't wait to see what the team does in the next few years. I'm Madison Schimmick, and I'm a sophomore, and this is my third year on the team, and I'm looking forward to more time. And I'm Jamie Kimball. I'm a senior, and I'll be diving next year as well. And yeah, it was a really fun time this year. We have a couple representatives come on up of the state runner-up volleyball team. Uh, great fall that we had with the volleyball team. Section champs, state runner-ups, uh, lots of community support. Um, in addition to the team's second place finish, and it was probably, I would say, one of the absolute most exciting finishes I've ever seen in a volleyball match let alone a state championship. So you definitely uh, showed us what a state championship game should be all about. And I know even though it didn't quite go the way you wanted on that evening, there's a whole lot to be proud of um, tonight as you stand with the community um, and we celebrate you. Um, a couple other highlights before I have the gals talk. Um, Ella Francis, CC McCroth, and Ellie uh, Veldman were selected for, for the all-tournament team. Ella Francis and Cece McGraw were also named to the All-State First Team team. Um, and our coaches, Mike Dean and Ryan Wagner, were selected as the Section 2 AAA Volleyball Coach and Assistant Coach of the Year. This was a first-time appearance for the Prior Lake Savage Lakers, um, and quite an appearance it was. So really, really proud of you. Do you have a few words you'd like to say as you introduce yourself? <laughs> well um, I'm Danielle Sorensen. I'm a senior. Um, it was really great to be a part of something like this. I mean, it was our first state birth, our first time ever winning the section. And we came so close last year, so it was great to uh, finally be there and be a part of it. It was an unforgettable experience. Um, I'm Mara Fossum, and I agree with everything Danielle said. <laughs> We're really proud coaching staff of the coaching staff of your entire team. And I know a lot of your teammates are actually playing club ball this evening or other sports. Everyone else is. And so the rest of the team was unable to be here. And I think that really speaks to the dedication um, that you all and all of our student athletes have both on their courts and fields and off in the academics. So thank you for taking the time to be here tonight. And congratulations again. Great job. Well, and then certainly we can't forget our athletic department who does such a fantastic job of always <laughs> keeping us well aware of what's happening um, with their tweets and their pictures and their organization. Um, you know, there is a whole lot of work that goes into 
scheduling and planning the regular season, let alone when we go into the state tournament. So uh, Russ Reitz, Athletic, our Activities Director, please come up here. And I know Beth Fuller was unable to be here tonight, um, but we recognize and celebrate her and thank her as well. So Russ, thank you for everything. We'll expect the same in the winter season. <laughs> I think we are at old business, uh, the world's best workforce plan. Good evening, Chair Ruel, members of the board, Dr. Stalo. I'm here tonight uh, in the place of Miss uh, Amy Jonke. She's ill this evening. Uh, I'm going to give a quick recap on world's best workforce. As you know, uh, during the data retreat back on November 16th, we, we did a very thorough look at uh, the data in the district uh, as part of world's best workforce. And there's really the part that I want to highlight tonight are two things. The strategic plan that the district has and world's best workforce are interrelated. And when we went through that presentation and really looked at how those connections were made, that was intentional. It was intentional to, to demonstrate how effective our strategic plan is for students as well as how we bring world's best workforce to life as we, uh, as we expect and as we are pursuing high uh, academic excellence for all of our students. Here's our framework for the future. The piece I want to point out here is in our mission statement, we talk about all learners. Um, learners for our students and staff, everyone who's uh, associated with the organization, and then our strategic directions. What we hope that the goals that guide our educational programs, services, and our resources. And here's that link. We talk about educating all learners to their full potential through our strategic directions, and the part on the right is uh, the components of world's best workforce, and that's about all students ready for stool, school, um, reading at grade level, um, closing achievement gaps, ready for college and career, and graduating from high school. The purpose of the legislation was ensuring that districts have sound strategic plans as well as uh, educational programs that focus for all students and expose the achievement gap and have equity for all students. And those five goal areas I just shared with you and part of the, the presentation on the 16th was going through each one of those areas and showing you and bringing to life how that is alive and well in Prior Lake Savage Area Schools. With that, uh, we're at a very quick end here, um, but I'm seeking board approval on the world's best workforce plan this evening. Okay, do we have any questions from the rest of the discussion, comments? You know, just a general observation, this law well was passed in 2013 and it was something we were already doing with the district, so it was easy to incorporate it just into the law. Just incorporate it. Any other comments? All right. Uh, do I have a motion to approve uh, the world's best workforce plan? I'll make that motion. And by Rich, second? Second. By Dan. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes 7 to 0. Thank you. You're up again, right? Yes. All right. Uh, the 16 17 calendar. In your board packet, you're bringing back the calendar again for the 2016 17 school year. There's been one change from the last uh, board meeting, and that was something that uh, uh, Director Hansen pointed out to us was just looking at that January 2nd. Uh, being a, a federal holiday and in our previous calendar we had uh, that being as a school day as we took that input um, some of our teachers also uh, shared the same thing looking into that it was indeed a federal holiday and so we adjusted our calendar to recognize that being an off day for staff and students but otherwise everything else in um, the calendar is the same as what was presented to you uh, at the last regular meeting and this evening I'm seeking board approval to move forward, uh, I know we have quite a few stakeholders in the district that are looking forward to making plans for next year. So <laughs> it's once the board takes action, we will certainly post this promptly. 
Uh, any questions? I guess I won't. So we didn't. We just took the second out. We didn't add it or shift. That's correct. We shifted um, from the front end of winter break okay. to the part on the second. So the, oh, okay. we took the day in the front and we took the dark. The oh, so we, we still correct. kept the day. Okay. Correct. That's what I want to make sure. Okay. Yes, sir. And you still have some good headroom in case of snow days. Yes. Uh, the statute for uh, the statute for the from the state has changed away from days to hours of instruction, and we are still well above the state minimum for the number of instructional hours for our students at the elementary, middle school, and high school level. Um, the only comment I'd make is um, I don't know if this is our second, but third. This would be our third calendar with spring break being in the middle of March, which I think. Um, many parents appreciate that's a lot of times feedback that I would get is that it was too too late and mm -hmm. so I appreciate the group keeping it there uh, any other comments questions all right so I have a motion to approve the 2016-17 school calendar as listed so moved by Chad second by Melissa all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed that passes 7-0 thank, thank you thank you very much all right, and on to new business, uh, the energy use update. Good evening, Chair Ruel, School Board, Dr. Stavo. Um, I, have, I have with me this evening Margaret Bishop, who has been monitoring our energy use for many years. Um, and she's here to share the good news. Oh, good. <coughs> This is a uh, summary for the last school year. I come every annually to talk to you guys, just give you a quick update. So this was the utility cost for last school year, 14-15. Um, the actual cost was about $1.2 million. And then I kind of did a pie chart so you can see where the money's going. As you can see here, electric is 62% of your overall budget. So anything that we can do to reduce your electric use is going to have a significant impact on your cost. This is a little bit more detailed report, but this is kind of giving you a history back to 2006, 06, 07. And you'll see it kind of moves up and down and there's a light green line of hard to see but that is actually the weather data looking at both the heating degree day and cooling degree days and you can see that has a significant impact on what your costs are going to be it's kind of hard to predict a year <laughs> ahead what the budget for utilities because you never know what the weather is going to be so you'll see it kind of jumped up in 13 14 and then came back down again in 14 15 and that's just weather driven I will point out, it, you also notice in 1314, the oil prices were significantly higher, and that, that had to do with cost per gallon of fuel oil jumped substantially, and I believe you filled one new tank? A uh, couple new tanks for generators and used them. So. Now to the side of the equation where you do actually have some control, you don't have a lot of control on the cost side of utilities. They're, rate structures, you can do the best that you can do, but energy use is really where you guys have an impact. And you can see over time, the district was really driven by weather, as weather got colder, the energy use went up. And you'll see in these last three years, we've kind of bro broken that trend, and I attribute that to a lot of the work by Jim staff, <coughs> excuse me, Jim staff and, and, and the students the green ribbon school programs, those type of things. <coughs> and then this one is water use. And this one, um, the district really has shown significant improvement in water back from the 06, 07 year to the current year. We've had a couple of things, uh, a little uptick this year, but part of that had to do with having to 
refill a pool a couple of times, and that does have a significant impact. Also, heating degree is not so much, but cooling degree days really has an impact on your water use. Um, if it's a really hot, dry summer, you're going to be out watering fields and stuff a lot more than normal. So it does have some impact. Is that the end of my time? I'm working on it. <laughs> I'll, I'll jump <laughs> Okay, this is the dashboards. Everybody loves dashboards. This is actually from the state's D3 benchmarking website. All of your data for all of your school buildings are on that website. It's public data. It is required for the Green Ribbon School Program. So anytime a school wants to apply, we have to make sure all of that data is current. And I believe we just did another building. Glendale. Glendale applied this year. And as you can see, they're all green, um, significant reduction in energy use. So this is based on the 09-010 school year and is normalized by square footage. This is where the district's being compared to itself over time. And those numbers are pretty good. Um, consumption is down 18.73, and the carb our carbon footprint is shrinking too. 15% reduction, so it's, it is green stuff, good. Now this one is comparing your district to the state model energy code. So if a building was gonna be built now, it would be built to this code, and it's comparing your site to that. And as you can see, you're almost completely five stars. And uh, Jim and I were joking about that last little mm -hmm. corner of the one star. And I pointed out that it was the district office that was causing that. <laughs> <laughs> but basically what it's telling you here is that you're using 50% less energy than a new building would be if it was built today. That's outstanding. So kudos to the district. This is just... Um, gives you an idea, this, there's a lot of data in this website, plus in my tracking reports. This is just looking at over time, how you've used energy and how it compares to the baseline for D3. Okay, carbon emissions. This is um, a big topic of conversation with kids, and also now it's um, with the clean power plant rule being pushed forward. It's going to have an impact on everybody because the utilities are not going to be able to meet a lot of that, so they're going to push it off onto the customers. And you guys are showing tremendous progress. They're, I believe, going to be comparing it to the 2012-13 in kind of carbon reduction. So. You guys are ahead of the game there. Once again, kudos. This last year is really a significant drop. This is um, from my reporting, and it's by building, kind of giving you a, a synopsis of the data of how your, each site's doing by gas and oil use. Electric. There's two parts to an electric bill. It's electric kilowatt hours, and then there's the demand use, your instantaneous use of electricity, water, and then translating all of that into dollar amounts. And this last year, you avoided about $90,000. So a negative number on this chart is... Oh, it might, I should point it out. For me, positive means you reduced your energy use. Negative means it increased. Flip, but I was like positive, good. Any questions? Go ahead, Lisa. Uh, going back to slide uh, or page three, you had uh, the D3 benchmarks. You mentioned that those numbers were from 09 10. <coughs> the numbers are current, it's just being compared to the 09 010 year. This one here? Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's all data is current as of about two months ago. So the electric cost being the largest majority of our cost, have you what ideas does the district have to reduce? 
be the rest of the talk. You want to take that one? Sure. Uh, some of the things we've been doing is uh, generators on our Minnesota Valley electric sites, so we get a reduced rate for that. We also participate in a curtailment program uh, with Excel, so if they call, um, typically in the summertime, they, they seem to be changing the rules a little bit on that, but they call um, to help us, you know, say we need to shut down some power to a clear level. We do that, we save a lot of money that way. And it's just awareness of lights and we schedule with automation, you know, and, and we just try to be really good um, and, and efficient. What percent, do we have a majority of high efficiency lighting in our building? Yes. Where I think they're going to yep, be? That was a project we went through with Nexus. Uh, last year and the year before. On that note, I can throw out that uh, Excel Energy is looking to have an increase in rates of about 5% starting this January. And they're looking to do that, well, probably more than that over the next couple of years. So that is going to have an impact on the budget. We also just um, today we're meeting with the representative from Excel they are changing one of the programs that we are on that could have an impact, but Jim and I are working to minimize that so it doesn't have too bad of an impact. I'd like to give one more example, Rich. Um, sure. In the parking lot here, we, we put in um, LED lights sure. as, as a trial. Uh, the payback isn't quite there yet, um, so it costs a little bit more than um, you know a five-year payback. Right. but. We're, we're seeing how it works and, and the lot's really well lit. And as the LED technology has improved, the cost will come down. And that's more of a long term investment as opposed long, to an correct, long term. Yeah. Uh, I have one here. Um, if you go to the cost by building guide, I think one of the last slides, what attributes to Jeffers Pond being out Part of? Partly, we moved the baseline quirt on Jeffers Pond because a lot of work had been done there. So it's actually being compared to, I believe, the 13-14 school year. So it's, um, we like, part of the, what we're doing right now is trying to make some adjustments because you guys have made some substantial changes to the building and we're trying to take that into account. So they are kind of been negatively impacted by that, moving that baseline cord. So all the work that was done prior to that is no longer included. So they're being compared to being a really good school to trying to get better than best. So that was one of our Green Ribbon schools a couple of years ago. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Just what I did. I, was yeah. I had the pleasure of just going out there to see it, yeah. and I was just yeah. so impressed by that school. So, you know, when you're already you know, the top of the top, every little percentage is very hard to get to. Sure. So. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I just had one. Is there any buildings that we would target? I mean, that, you know, that are specifically kind of out of reach? I mean, are, are one of our outliers as far as, you know, in comparison of us as far as, you know, how they're doing efficiency-wise? I mean, are, are they middle school? I mean, is there? I, I would say Greenwood would be a, our next target. Yeah, because that is some significant work, right? Right. Heating, cooling, and yeah. Along with the district also. Yeah. Along, oh, yeah. <laughs> I think we've all heard that loud and clear. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Uh, any other questions? All right. Thank you for your work. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Julie, I think you're up with the table final levy certification or did we do that already no yeah okay the final levy was presented earlier right. and so tonight all i'm asking is that you approve the final um, levy certification all right do i have a motion to approve the uh, final levy for 2016 adopt 2016 payable 2016 final levy so moved mm. having to bring the chairs down by Dan, I know. <laughs> By Dan, I don't want to just go Dan. It's the shortest thing. Um, By Dan, second. Second. By Ben. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. That passes seven zero. All right, and budget. And now we'll talk a little bit about the current year final budget. 
and we'll also have a little bit of a discussion about our enrollment. Um, at the beginning of the year, our enrollment budgeted last June, we budgeted 7,723. That's what we thought our student growth was going to be. Um, as of October 1, our enrollment was 7,905, and um, we are actually recommending about seven, we are recommending 7,824 as our enrollment um, increase for the current year. Um, some of that you have to remember is due to PS, we're now counting our part-time and full-time PSEL students that are attending Normandale um, Community College because we are paying them um, directly for any college credit classes that we have. So just as a reminder. So with 101 additional students onto our budget, it's $931,000. Um, we have some additional special ed revenue this year. We talked about at a previous meeting, that's 800,000. Um, something new this year is Indian education, which I hadn't talked about previously, but that is some new legislation this year um, for our Indian education, of which we do have a, um, quite a number of um, students of Native American descent. And so we do get a little bit of money there. And then we had um, quite a bit more federal and title carryover than we have had in the past. And that accounts for about um, $506,000. Um, some of that is federal special education um, and some of it is title um, monies. This year we had anticipated a pretty significant drop in our title dollars with our preliminary budget as well as our federal special ed dollars. And some of that's due to our numbers of free and reduced lunch students. And because we are a low um, a school with a low free and reduced count, we would typically lose some dollars there. But there was some allocation of additional funding from the federal government towards those title grants. And so we actually saw an increase there that I had not anticipated. And so that along with some net federal revenue for special education, um, that um, total is 506000 so in the unassigned, it's $2.2 million. We have some operating capital of 26,000, some additional staff development and performing sciences dollars. Um, we did have some board approved expenditures, which included, as I talked about earlier, that Normandale PSEO, the dollars that we're paying directly for college cl classes to Normandale. Um, the staff development, gifted and talented, some additional salaries and benefits and um, staffing additions for a total of about 887,000, almost $888,000. Capital expenditures, we added on to the ALC lease, so that's 15,000. We have some remaining building projects that weren't completed as of June 30th, so those dollars are out there under capital expenditures and some remodeling and furniture at the ALC as well for $327,000. And those, these are the expenditure placements, about 857,000 are in the undesignated, the gifted and talented. Staff development's a little higher than that 28,000 you saw earlier because we did decide to utilize some fund balance dollars there to help us with our growth this year. We had about $102,000 in um, fund balance. So there's a need in the staff development area to utilize those dollars. Same with the federal programs, utilizing some carryover in the federal program area. Um, we have about $466,000 of building carryover. What that is, is at the end of the year, if our, we don't, we're not a use it or lose it school district where you have to spend all your money in one year and if you don't, you would lose it if you didn't spend it. We um, like to allocate the dollars and if our principals don't spend it and they wanna use it in the next year, we allow that. So that's the $466,000 that we automatically put back into those expenditure budgets um, for them. And then we have the 327,000 in capital expenditures for a total of $2.1 million of total ex additional expenditures allocated to our budget. As you can see, here is our general fund budget. Um, total overall general fund budget is $80 million. This is the first time we have actually hit that $80 million mark. Um, just slightly over um, for the revenues and just slightly um, 
another $250,000 less than the revenues for our um, expenditure in that area. So we're positive. Besides, we actually are spending down some of those fund balances as well. Any questions about our general fund budget? Any questions? I am going to move on then and talk a little bit about our changes to our all, all of our remaining funds. And we have not had a, we, these don't change a lot from the preliminary budget. However, our community ed, we do have some adjustments that we allow for class offerings. We've had some additional preschool offerings this year, so it has adjusted their fund um, a little bit, those revenues and expenditures. Um, we've had about $142,000 remaining in our construction fund, so I wanna make sure that we, we have those expenditures as well. So we will spend that down to zero. And then our internal service fund. We've had, because we have more staff, we've had some increased participation in our health and dental programs that I wasn't anticipated at our preliminary budget and some increased um, contributions to our HRA program. So those, you can see those overall budgets. I will have to say that I did not adjust the food service budget. However, at this time, I'm not anticipating that large of a decrease. Um, but because we're still working through some of those, I left the budget as is. Um, I have had quite a few discussions with our director, Jeannie Peterson, about that. And I, I do believe we'll come out very much more positive than this number shows. Any questions about any of these budgets? Any questions? Okay, so I recommend um, approving this budget, this final budget to the board. Do I have a motion to approve uh, the final budget for 2015-16? So moved. By Dan, second. I'll second the motion. By Rich. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes 7-0. Thank, Thank you. you. And next up is curriculum course schedule updates for 2016-17. Good evening again. Uh, here this evening to, uh, this is the time of the year where we really start uh, preparing for next year. 16-17 looking at um, our courses for students as we prepare for registration. I'd like to invite Dave Lund up and Melanie Smeja up. Just to give a brief overview, in your board packets, there are four um, course, course proposals for Fire Lake High School next year. Uh, American Sign Language course in our World Language Department, a regular calculus class in our math uh, department, a revised English 12 course in our uh, English department, and an interdisciplinary facts and science course. And then also included in your board packets are the two MINCAP pathways, the healthcare pack pathway, the articulated um, courses there for students as we prepare for registration, and then also the business pathway, both for year one. Um, we're seeking board approval this evening on moving forward with these courses and with the continuing our preparations for MINCAPs. If you have any questions, uh, Mr. Lund and Ms. Meja are here to answer anything that you might have. Um, oh, go ahead. Oh, one sorry. more thing. Sure. All of these have come through the District Curriculum Advisory Committee. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you read my mind. <laughs> Several times, we, we've, the last two meetings, we've had uh, these course proposals come through, and, and uh, with MINCAPs being on the forefront, uh, Curriculum Advisory has looked at the, the MINCAPs proposals uh, several times. So, yeah, and that's part of our, our procedures and protocol before it comes to the board. Uh, for review and uh, subsequent action. Okay. Question. Um, oh, go ahead, Melissa. Sure. Um, at what level of uh, participation was our consultant for the English Zone involved with uh, course development? I can answer that one. Thank you. Um, he played a key role in ideas sharing of what they have at Vantage as well as looking at what Blue Valley CAP does for their program. A lot of our courses um, evolved over 
the last few months and how we thought of starting one way and then meeting with our staff at all three high schools and middle schools and then also business members in the community and in those fields of study and seeing what they really tr believe is best for the kids. So that's kind of how <coughs> it evolved into how it came out tonight. But lots of good input from all the community members and staff as well. Um, any other questions? I have a couple of comments. Um, the American Sign Language, I guess I was just interested in how that kind of came about. I'm kind of excited to see that. Our uh, deaf and hard of hearing teacher approached me last spring about it. And so worked with World Language Department writing up the interesting thing. Actually, I went met with Maddie Tyson and the student council executive group because I wasn't really sure about a course like that. I never had, but after talking to the students, um, the consensus of the six students on the executive council, well, this is something that's been very popular in other schools, and they felt that, you know, if we offered it, obviously we need to have that 24 range right. students, but um, then we met and we sat there, and I ran it past the students, and they thought it'd be a popular course, and it's being supported by our deaf and hard of hearing teacher. Is there, like, American Sign Language 1, 2, like, is that what can go to? Yes. Or? Okay. Because I, I think I'm not an expert in it. I know, but yes. I, but I, I mean, I do know that like it can fulfill like a language requirement. Yes, right? it it's, can. It right? is considered okay. a world language. Okay, that, that's what I thought. I, I thought that's what I thought. Okay. Well, I'm excited to see that. Um, can you talk a little bit about the English? I was just the change there. It over seems the, a little over bit the last couple of years, I've been talking with our English department and students that are involved in college algebra, college press split, college prep comp, or AP are getting a full year of, of English, of writing and speaking before they graduate. Students that aren't taking that pathway get a menu of classes and really only a quarter where they either have writing and speaking skills. So working with English language last two years, we didn't feel that that was preparing our students enough for that. So students who are already in all your English classes, it will not alter those but students who are not choosing that pathway then will have to have one semester of English that will hit the writing and the speaking to better bear the, prepare them for life after high school. They will still have two quarters of electives. We felt we were kind of shortchanging our students on preparation for that. So those students will still get a full year too, yeah. but uh, they're making yes, a but, different. Yes, but they'll get a full year. They are now already getting a full year, okay. but we're making at least a, pers uh, a semester of that the more prescriptive so we guarantee okay. that all our students okay. are prepared. Makes sense. So with that change though, are we taking out some electives? Is that what's happening? or uh, We'll see what the registration process does. We don't okay. take out any electives. We have a student-driven curriculum. This was pr proposed by our English department. Right. They do feel that they will lose some English electives because of this, because that's what it'll replace. <coughs> but they think it's worth it to better prepare our students for the future. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Okay. Um, anyone have any other questions? Seeing none, um, I have to approve these, right? I can, I, right? Yeah. Um, do I have a motion to approve the curriculum course schedule updates for 2016 17? So moved. By Todd, second? Aye. By Ben. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes 7 0. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then next up is our policy. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Melanie. That's right. Melanie wanted to have a little, give us a little. Thank you. Yes, I love. Thank you very much, Dr. Yes. Sallow and members of the board. Um, I wanted to give you a brief update as to where everything is going with MinCAPS and all the excitement that we've been having the last um, few weeks. It's going quickly. So, um, the goal. Oh, darn, what's that one? The goal today is just to give you a brief update in the areas of the curriculum, which we just addressed. Um, our communication and then our community and business partners as well as our joint board meeting that's coming up in a couple months. So as you saw when you looked over the courses it has our business course pathway for the year one and as we discussed we talked with several people and staff members and people in the community to see what is best for our students. Our business pathway will be partnering with Hennepin Technical College to give the students all college credits as well for them to carry on with them to another college or to help them get into the college of their choice. In regards to medicine and healthcare, these are the courses that we are beginning for year one, and we are working with Normandale Community <coughs> College for our healthcare pathway. 
and excited to see everything and the opportunities that they have there. So talking with our health instructors and people within the health field, these courses were very important, they felt, for a understanding of healthcare, and then we allow for year two for more expansion into more specific areas that they may be interested in. And that they would get CPR certification in the fall semester and first aid certification in the spring semester. So that's where I found that exciting to add that into some of our coursework and make it relevant that way. Now communication, we've been having meetings with um, all the staff at all the three high schools. Um, Lakeville South meeting has been postponed, um, but we've also been meeting with the middle schools as well and being able to talk to their staff and share everything in regards to um, what's going on with MNCAPS and how they can get involved or maybe they have friends and business partners that they would want to connect with MNCAPS. And some of them have shared that and helped lead us to some of the business partners that we now are moving forward with. Student communication, we've had some interest groups. We have another interest group coming up soon at, Lake, at Prior Lake High School on the 17th in the morning with the marketing students, and as well as other groups that we'll be setting up for in January. Um, one of the main things that we're doing is our student and parent information evening and mornings. That's the first week of January right after break. And I know some emails have gone out to sophomore and junior parents as well as invitations have gone out in the mail. And we've been starting to get several feedback from family members that are interested for their students. I actually just got an email from a student confirming himself that he is going to be there. <laughs> and I was like, you are the kind of kid we need. This is awesome. <laughs> so it's been great to kind of see, you know, different conversations and um, seeing the community come together and are excited about it. But here are the different dates that we have. We are doing a morning session at each high school and an evening session at each high school. Um, if you cannot make the Prior Lake High School session and it's easier for you to make the Lakeville one, um, please make sure that you do so. Same for Lakeville people if they need to come to the Prior Lake one. They just RSVP to myself and then we'll make sure that we have the right space for everyone there. Um, the evening ones, we are looking to bring a student from the Vantage program to be there and give the student perspective and then also bring in some of our business partners to be there at the morning and evening ones um, as we can have them talk with the adults and the parents and get their feedback and share more information. So this is starting to grow, um, but these are a lot of our business partners that have said, yes, we are partnering with MNCAPS and have also asked them for our logo so they can cross um, promote and share the program because they are so excited about it. Um, one, you know, one fun one is Cosmopolitan Orthodontics and we met with them, they were so passionate about it that they even share that they have um, some simulation ideas of how they can already get involved with our students. Um, some other of our business partners are saying, oh, I wish we were already doing this because we have ideas that the kids could be now. Um, and other ones like rockminnesota.org, twistedloopyarn, and shopjimmy.com was all from this morning. So I've been trying to update this as we keep going of different people who are excited. And when we meet with them, to see the passion they have for our kids is exciting for me to see how they want to help the community and help it grow and help everything in our economy keep moving. So it makes my job easy because I get to, you know, champion this and see people get excited about how they can get involved with all their projects and everything. So I promise to keep this short for everyone. So just a reminder about our joint board meeting that we will be having here on February 22nd. Actually, at, at the high school. school. Oh, it's at the high school. Yeah. I will make yeah. sure we change that and because yep. I will be at the Lakeville board meeting tomorrow night. I'll make sure that I inform them yep. of that. And we have to make sure we have a written plan. We usually watch it all and, you know, usually. For okay. a joint board meeting. We will look into that for you and okay. make sure we have it ready. Okay. Um, and then just to close with this, I have to say, um, I reach out to Maddie. Um, we sometimes get something in the mail every year around this time of year. Did not know where it came from. Um, but this year we expect to see some more red letters or envelopes from the student council. Um, it made this huge difference for my four-year-old, three-year-old last year and how you touched them. So thank you for doing such a sweet gift yeah, for our kids. Thank you. Yeah. So, any questions? Any comments, questions, anybody? All right, great job. Excited to see it coming yeah, it's forward. Exciting. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, next up is policy. This is just a first read uh, on the policies. Uh, Dr. Stavo, I think, has them. Um, and just kind of give you an idea of what we looked at when we were looking at them. Um, and the second read, obviously, will be January 11th. But if you have comments or anything after, feel free to email us. We'll have another reading. 
Yep, the first three are on uh, curriculum uh, policies. Um, we had several meetings and really just looked to the MSBA um, updated content is what we looked at for that. One area that is important to note is we're trying to be more responsive to um, making sure that we're meeting with departments more regularly instead of a traditional seven year cycle. So you'll see some of those updates um, as well in order for us to just be responsive to the needs and have more of a just in time curriculum. So those are the policy ones. All right. Um, all right, and like I said, um, that will come back again, second and final read for the January 11th board meeting. So if you have comments or questions, please reach out to Liz, myself, or Dr. Stella. Uh, Superintendent, you said. Yeah, I'm just gonna, can I finish up just a little bit oh, on the policies sorry, too, just so you know, the turf um, guidelines too, not a lot of changes on those at all. Um, our rental fees, we continue to look and they are within the average range of our other uh, metro districts. Um, we did make a change to stadium supervisors. We increased a bit um, to align with contract changes. Um, we also removed the press box. Our press box has some unique um, uh, equipment that we wanna make sure that we have people also employed there if we're going to be um, using that. And then with the wellness uh, policy, really again, the changes that we made there um, were to uh, refer to the, instead of food service, child nutrition service teams, instead of nursing, nursing home health services, um, and uh, adding language to make sure that our parents and students knew of the nutritional content in the Nutri-Study. So some slight changes there. All right. All right. Then I will move on yep. to the superintendent's report. Um, Big news coming out of federal education is last week, President Obama signed a new K-12 education bill into law that replaces No Child Left Behind. The new federal education law is called Every Student Success Act, or ESSA. Um, well, the basic testing re requirements of No Child Left Behind will stay in place, especially for third through eighth graders. Um, ESSA takes away some of the high stakes that have, been, have been attached to No Child Left Behind. The job of evaluating student schools and implementing improvement plans where needed shifts largely back to states and local school districts to determine that. Minnesota is positioned well because of the world's best workforce and because of the waiver that we had in place. Um, <coughs> ESSA also seeks to provide more um, children access to high quality preschool. There's still many details in the, I think, 1,200-page uh, document that will be figured out. Um, overall, ESSA is focused on holding all students to high academic standards that prepare them for success and give states more control to direct resources where they are needed, particularly in achievement gap areas. Uh, the other update that I wanted to share um, is to share uh, the Teacher of Our Year honorees. Um, each of our schools has selected its 2015-16 Teacher of the Year. Teacher of the Year candidates are nominated by their colleagues, and this year's honorees are the following. Ellen Abney from Westwood, Laura Friges from Twin Oaks, Jen Halverson from Glendale, Katie Hansen from Red Tail Ridge, Trody Jory from Edgewood School, Megan McDermott from Hidden Oaks, Lisa Olson from Greenwood, Jill Seltrow from Five Hawks, Cindy Sudlow from Jeffers Pond, and Jared Daggett from Fire Lake High School. The Teacher of the Year celebration will be Monday, January 18th from 3.30 to 5 in the Twin Oaks Media Center. All right. Thank you. Um, any other administrative reports? Anything? No? Okay. Um, board reports. Do we... Uh, last weekend, I had a chance to attend the Minnesota School Board Association uh, Delegates Convention. It's a, it's a grassroots uh, event where school boards and individual school board members can pass resolutions, bring them up to uh, members present, and we vote on those resolutions. You all should have gotten an email from MSBA on how those resolutions, the final results of those resolutions. They include resolutions concerning early childhood, and basically the resolution was, I know the board was interested in it, basically allowing local control and providing enough monetary compensation for those things. But there's also, uh, I think a total of 13, 14 uh, resolutions that were voted on, so fun event. 
Okay. Uh, any other board reports? Yes, yeah. and then uh, last Friday, Carrie and I uh, attended the Schools and Equity Education meeting, and I provided a copy of the platform for the legislative platform for 2016. It was provided to us for each, each of you to have a copy of that. Um, Speaker Doug presented on ideas about universal pre-K program ideas. Okay, thank you. Um, and then any other board reports? Student Council. Um, yeah, looking at November, uh, we went trick-or-treating for cans around the local neighborhood and donated all the goods that we collected to the local cab agency. Uh, seven of our members attended the South Suburban Leadership Conference, which was really um, helpful and fun. Uh, we had our annual kind of bonding day at St. Michael's Coffee House, and that's where we do a lot of bonding games, planning, and idea sharing. That's usually a highlight of um, especially the freshman year. Um, looking at December, we are starting, the basketball season has started, so we'll be running boys concessions um, every game and some girls. So stop by and watch and get some popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> um, tonight we wrote letters from Santa to uh, uh, teachers in the district to their kids, which is always a favorite uh, uh, to a lot of teachers. So that was a lot of fun and a good way to give back to the community. And um, looking ahead, we're just planning our sweethearts dance and that will be in February, and doing some more community service. Uh, any other? Okay. Uh, future events um, coming up. Um, December 23rd to January 1st, 2016 is winter break. Uh, that'll be no school for E through 12. Uh, January 4th, um, classes resume, E12. January 11th. Uh, we have an added board study session um, that was added from our last study session last week uh, here at the DSC at 5 o'clock. Um, then January 11th, um, we also have our organizational meeting, which takes place at 6.30, uh, with, and it runs into our regular school board meeting after that at 7 o'clock. And then January 14th or 15th um, is, I'm sure you've all been emailed, and I know Mark has sent out an email, um, the MSBA Annual Leadership Conference is, is um, going on, that's our annual conference for us. Um, and hopefully you've all let Mark know whether or not you're going, I think. If not, please get back to me. Um, and other than that, I think that's it. Um, all right, I look for a motion to adjourn. By Ben, second? Second. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes 7-0. Good night.